Hi, Genetic Innovation students, and welcome to your first lecture in Section 1 on Genome Structure. In today's lecture, we'll be looking at the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic genomes. Firstly, we'll be comparing the genome size, the amount of coding versus non-coding DNA, histones and structural proteins, as well as the genome location within the cell. Just to remind you about the major domains of life. Bacteria and archaea are both considered to be prokaryotes. And then we have a third domain called the eukaryotes. Although archaea are also prokaryotes, we'll be focusing specifically on bacteria for these lectures. And that's because archaea do share some similarities between prokaryotes such as bacteria as well as eukaryotes. For that reason, archaea are actually considered to be an independent group within prokaryotes due to these similarities. Now in this table, what we have is a comparison of the number of genes versus the genome size in different organisms. So if you look at the bacteria, the smallest one being Mycoplasma genitalium, with a genome size of 0.58 megabases. And E. coli strain K12 having a larger genome size of 4.64 megabases. If we look at the number of genes in these organisms, we can see 500 genes in Mycoplasma genitalium, 2,300 in Streptococcus pneumoniae, and 4,000 in Mycobacterium tuberculosis. And these and as you can see, these gene numbers correlate with the genome size in these organisms. Now, if we go down to the eukaryotes, we can see that the eukaryotes, Saccharomyces cerevisiae down to Homo sapiens, all have much larger genomes. And of course, these eukaryotic organisms, for example, the plant, Arabidopsis thaliana, and uh, the mouse, are of course much larger than single-celled bacterial prokaryotes, and that and that is demonstrated in their genome size. Eukaryotes also have a much larger number of genes compared to prokaryotes, with humans having approximately 35,000 genes in the genome. Now, when we talk about the number of genes here, we specifically are referring to the number of protein coding genes. So although eukaryotes have much larger numbers of genes compared to the prokaryotes, we also see that their genome sizes are much larger. Another difference that we can also take into account are the number of protein coding genes in the genome versus the genome size. So what I've done in this last column here is just did a rough estimate by dividing the number of genes to the total genome size to get an idea or a picture of the number of protein coding genes within the space of the genome. Remember that the number of genes does not adequately reflect the number of bases that these genes occupy. So this is just a rough idea. So if we look at the number of genes in prokaryotes versus their genome size, you can see we have 0 0.086, 0 0.1, 0 0.091, 0 0.095. But when we go down to the eukaryotes, take Saccharomyces cerevisiae, for example, its genome size is much larger than that of E. coli. Although Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the yeast, is also a single-celled organism. However, if we look at the gene number, the number of genes is not that much higher compared to E. coli. So if we divide the number of genes by the total genome size, in Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that's 0 0.048, whereas in E. coli, it's 0 0.095. So that alone tells us that the number of genes in relation to the total genome size is much smaller in eukaryotes compared to prokaryotes. Let's go further down now to the mouse and to the human. We can see that their genomes are much larger than bacteria. However, if we compare the number of genes in the genome to the total genome size, we get an amount of 0 0.001 for both of them. And so this demonstrates that the number of protein coding genes in the genome versus the total genome size is much smaller in eukaryotes compared to prokaryotes. Now let's look into that in a little bit more detail. So what we've established is that eukaryotes have much larger genomes than prokaryotes. And generally, the number of genes in the genome does correlate with genome size. However, what's important to know 
is that the size of the genome does not always correspond to the complexity of the organism. For example, both Saccharomyces cerevisiae as well as E. coli are both single-celled organisms. However, Saccharomyces cerevisiae has a much larger genome than E. coli. Another example would be in the case of the salamander, the axolotl. The axolotl genome is 10 times larger than the human genome. However, these organisms are much smaller than humans. So what we have also determined from the previous table is that eukaryotic genomes may contain much larger amounts of non-coding DNA compared to less complex prokaryotes. And that's because the number of genes in relation to the total genome size which was much smaller in eukaryotes. So the number of protein coding genes in eukaryotes actually decreases as genomes grow larger. Whereas in prokaryotes, the number of protein coding genes determines genome size diversity. So as genome sizes increase in prokaryotes, so do the number of protein coding genes and vice versa. In eukaryotes, these larger genome sizes can be attributed to things like whole genome duplications, which have occurred during the evolution of eukaryotes. Eukaryotes also contain large numbers of repetitive DNA sequences. Remember that eukaryotic genomes or chromosomes have different structures. Eukaryotes contain centromeres in their chromosomes. And these regions of the DNA do not code for any genes. Eukaryotic genomes also have gene regulatory elements. And these are some examples that may be, and these are some examples that may account for the larger genome sizes in eukaryotes. So now let's look at the prokaryotic genome in a little bit more detail. So this picture shows the prokaryotic genome. The prokaryotic genome is contained within the cytoplasm in a space referred to as the nucleoid. So if you can remember, prokaryotes don't have a defined nucleus, which means that its DNA is not enclosed by a membrane. Prokaryotic genomes are also most usually haploid, which means they don't have two chromosomes. Prokaryotes contain a single, circular, double-stranded DNA chromosome. Although the structure of the prokaryotic chromosome is not the same as the eukaryotic chromosome, it's still referred to as a chromosome. Remember that eukaryotes do not have circular chromosomes. Eukaryotic chromosomes are linear. Just as an additional piece of information, some prokaryotes do contain linear chromosomes. However, we'll be referring to bacterial prokaryotes for this lecture, which usually have circular chromosomes. In addition to its circular chromosome, prokaryotes can also have extra chromosomal DNA molecules, and these are called plasmids. Plasmids are independently replicating smaller circular DNA fragments that are dispensable. And so therefore prokaryotes can function without them. If you would like to read more about this, please navigate to this page from Khan Academy on prokaryotic structure. We'll now look at how the prokaryotic genome is packaged into the cell. Prokaryotic genomes have to fit themselves into a very tiny space. The E. coli chromosome has a circumference of 1.6 millimeters. However, the E. coli cell is just 0.25 micrometers across. In order to package itself into the small space, the genome is supercoiled. So we had a circular DNA stranded molecule, and that circular stranded molecule can become twisted and turned to form a looped domain. The formation of this looped domain is called supercoiling, and this is controlled by two enzymes called DNA gyrase and DNA topoisomerase 1. So E. coli does not have, the E. coli genome does not have unlimited freedom to move. And that's because it's further supercoiled or packaged around a protein called HU. HU is an anchoring protein, which is similar to histones in human genomes. However, the HU proteins are different in structure to human 
or eukaryotic histones. The HU proteins form a tetramer around which 60 base pairs of DNA can be wound. So you have these looped domains which are anchored or tethered to these histone-like proteins and that regulates or supercoils the DNA. All of this is contained within the nucleoid space. So E. coli contains about 40 to 50 supercoiled loops bound to a central protein core, which is made up of these anchoring proteins such as HU. This keeps the E. coli genome in a very tightly to this keeps the E. coli genome in a very tightly packaged state or supercoiled state. In order for genes to therefore be expressed, these loop domains must be uncoiled or unwound, and this process is also regulated by specific enzymes and that facilitates gene expression. We'll now move on to the next slide. Now that we know how the prokaryotic genome is organized, we've discussed how DNA can be supercoiled and we've discussed how supercoiling of the genome can facilitate gene expression as certain loops of the genome are unwound. We're now gonna look a little bit more detail at how these genes are expressed. So we know that in prokaryotes, we have gene density that's high. However, non-coding DNA is not completely absent in prokaryotes. For example, in E. coli, non-coding DNA accounts for about 11% of the entire genome. But this non-coding DNA is distributed at various points across the genome in small segments. So we have small amounts of non-coding DNA across the E. coli genome. Due to the fact that prokaryotic genomes are gene dense, the operon is a common feature in prokaryotic genomes. This is an example of an operon. So an operon refers to a region of co-regulated genes. So an operon can be a site that contains multiple genes, which are all expressed at the same time and also repressed at the same time. If we look at the structure of the LAC operon, for example, if you look at this diagram, what we see are three LAC genes, LAC-Z, LAC-Y, and LAC-A. Upstream of these three LAC genes, we have a capsite, a promoter, as well as an operator region. The capsite and promoter work hand in hand. The capsite is responsible for recruiting the RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter region. Once the RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, this facilitates expression of all three genes, LAC-Z, LAC-Y, and LAC-A. However, if the repressor is bound to the operator, this prevents or blocks the expression of all three genes by preventing binding of the RNA polymerase. And so you can see that all of these genes in the operon are co-regulated. And this is a very common feature in a lot of prokaryotic genomes. Now that we've come to the end of this lecture, I'd like you to move on to the next part of this course. I have two videos after this which give more details on the LAC operon. So please close this video and proceed to those videos. Thank you.